Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. I have two really good clips to share. Part one is the highest blood alcohol content I've ever heard of. And part two is a prelim exam for domestic violence where the defense attorney has some pretty good questioning. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Through the prosecutor. Thank you, Governor. I would have to agree with Mr. Shuffle. It's kind of a shame that this case was an eligible for sobriety court. Um, that being said, this should have been a death case, whether it was her or somebody she had in the room. This was roughly, my military time's not great, but this would have been early, late afternoon to early evening when she was on the road. So certainly not by herself. At a point four seven two, I worked seven years in this team. I can't count the number of OWIs that I've handled. This is the highest BAC I've ever seen. She should be dead. Like, we shouldn't have a case. She should have been dead in the car when they found her. For that reason, for the time that she was driving, for the fact there was an accident, she was going with it. I think the five days of jail up front is appropriate. I mean, this is a massive BAC with an accident. I, mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it. I think. This is the type of case that the five days jail contemplates. I think that's the more appropriate remedy at this point than 30 to 90 days of community service that would be the alternative to that. So I'd ask the court to impose the jail up front. Um, beyond that, I think the recommendations are appropriate. I think the request for her candidate advice is a good request and probably, frankly, a good alternative to the four times daily testing. So I would support that request and think that that's appropriate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is sentencing on the defendant's conviction of operating while intoxicated second offense. And the facts are the defendant uh, was uh, seen uh, driving all over the roadway and uh, eventually went into a ditch. Uh, a passerby must have noticed her car and called the police. Uh, when they arrived, the defendant was passed out behind the wheel of her car. The car was uh, still in uh, gear, it was in reverse, and uh, the defendant refused a preliminary breath test, but uh, on the scene at the jail, there was a PVT given, it was a 0 0.1, excuse me, 0 0.35, I know the defendant said she had a point four something at the assessment, but I don't know what the actual uh, result was. It was a point four seven two from the blood test. Okay, so I didn't realize it was that high. And that is uh, over 30 years, uh, one of the highest, if not the highest alcohol level that I've seen. Uh, so uh, the defendant uh, has a prior uh, drunk driving offense in 2018. And sometimes when I see fines and costs on an offense like that, I think about how maybe this never would have happened. Uh, maybe uh, if, if uh, something more serious had been done at that time, But, uh, you know, it's not very likely the court didn't have all the information we have today. And I'd say it's 2020. So anyhow, uh, the defendant, to her credit, has uh, been proactive in seeking help for a serious alcohol problem. Uh, she even admits that the uh, Catholic Human Services report was generous in its uh, assessment finding a moderate alcohol use disorder. I did notice that uh, she said to the assessor she thought it was a four something. Or, uh, but the assessor didn't have the actual alcohol level. And I don't see how they would have come up with anything but a severe uh, diagnosis myself, given that level. 
No. Uh, even with that, they're recommending outpatient substance counseling, the usual uh, educational classes and abstinence. So I think that the recommendations that have been made are generally good ones, and uh, we'll go along with that. Uh, it will be a probation for two years, and uh, that is because of the high alcohol level, the fact there was an accident, and uh, I, I am glad that you weren't hurt and no one else was. The fine is going to be $100. Foster 875 crime victim 50 judicial system fee, and there's a $125 rusting agency fee, and $22.50 is the uh, blood draw uh, charge goes to the prosecutor's office. The purpose of the probation is to achieve the rehabilitative goals stated in the Catholic Human Services Report, and uh, to that end, uh, the defendant is not to consume or possess any alcohol, no mind or mood altering <coughs> substances, no now prescribed medications or illegal drugs. If you have a prescription, you need to provide a copy of that to your probation agent, Ms. Hull, within 48 hours. You are to be respectful of court employees and care providers. You are to complete the alcohol highway safety education class and the victim impact panel. You're also to uh, fully cooperate in and complete the outpatient substance abuse counseling and follow all recommendations made by your therapist. I'm also going to uh, ask that you get a mental health assessment through Catholic Human Services. They offer co-occurring programs and that sounds like probably a good idea in this case. So uh, I think if you take that mental health assessment, they will uh, probably incorporate uh, those mental health issues into the substance abuse counseling. I will allow you also to complete your counseling through months in behavioral health. It sounds like you uh, have a good experience there. And if you'd rather go through months in behavioral health, that's fine with me. Rather than the four times daily pulmonary breath test, I am going to require a CAM device. And you'll need to continue testing until you get that set up through our community corrections department. Uh, you can uh, contact them today to try to get that set up. I don't know if they'll be able to get that placed uh, uh, before the end of the day or not. Uh, so, uh, again, continue the four times preliminary breath test until you have that CAM device installed. Uh, you're also to submit to discretionary testing for both drugs and alcohol. Oh, you know, I wasn't even thinking about the fact. This is a second offense. The law requires me to impose a sentence of five days in jail. I do think it is appropriate in this case. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and so you'll need to report to your probation agent and community corrections to have the CAM device installed as soon as that device, or excuse me, as soon as you're released from jail. Let's see, there's uh, today is Friday, Saturday, so Tuesday uh, morning you'll get out. And that's when I want you to report to uh, the probation office. Oh, I see there is two days credit. So uh, let's see, that would be Sunday. So you'll need to report on Monday morning, first thing they open the day, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's see, other than that, you are to report any contacts with law enforcement to your probation agent. I'm also going to require that you obtain a sponsor within the first 90 days and uh, engage in at least three uh, group recovery meetings per week. Now that could be AA or uh, there are other programs out there. 
uh, that do the same basic thing, uh, but uh, you need to uh, engage in at least three group recovery meetings per week. Is there anything else for you, Mr. Shepard? No, oh, Your Or for you, Mr. Shore? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, good luck to you, ma'am. It sounds like you're on the right track, and uh, I hope not to see you again except to uh, successfully discharge you from probation, okay? Thank you, right, Thank you. Mr. Alhart, are you ready? Thank you. All right, Mr. Settles, are you ready? Yes, uh, Dylan Least. That is file 9723 of 2023. Mr. Settles is here on the defendant's behalf and Ms. Olson for the people. And this is the date for preliminary examination. Are both parties ready to proceed? Your Honor. Yes, Judge. Go ahead and call your witness, Ms. Olson. Deputy Squires, please. Officer, if you could please raise your right hand and do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth to help you guys? Yes. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead, Ms. Olson. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you please state your name and spell your last name? Yes, uh, What is your current occupation? I'm a deputy with the Grand Traverse County Sheriff's Department. How long have you been in that role? Four years, nine months. Were you working in that capacity on June 17th and the early morning hours this year? Yes. Um, at approximately 12.37 in the morning, um, did you respond to 1566 US 31 North? Yes. Is that in Grand Traverse County? Yes. Why did you go there? I, to take the report of a domestic assault or an assault. And when you arrived, who did you see? Um, did you speak with Ms. Marsh? Yes. And what did she tell you had happened? She told me that objection here. Say 76827 C, Your Honor. Um, domestic violence victim statements admissible. Mr. Settles. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll allow the testimony under the statute. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. What did Ms. Um, Marsh tell you had occurred? Uh, she told me that she had been arguing with Mr. Least um, for a couple hours prior to my arrival. Um, he had left and come back several times to the hotel room. Um, she told me that she eventually went into the bathroom. Uh, Mr. Lee came in as well and struck her in the head. Um, she allowed me to feel the top of her head. I couldn't see so much because her hair was in the way, but I, I could feel a lump on the top of her head. So. And did you speak with Mr. Leeds at that time? Yes, uh, a little bit after I talked to Ms. Marsh. How did you make contact with him? Uh, he had returned back to the hotel room. And do you see the person that you spoke with that night here today? Yes. Can you indicate where he's sitting, something he's wearing? Uh, he's wearing the orange uh, next to Mr. Settles. Mr. Here. May the record reflect, Your Honor, that he's identified the witness. It will. Defendant. Thank you. Um, and did Mr. Lease make any statements to you about what had happened? Um, he didn't indicate or tell me that he had uh, assaulted Ms. Marsh. They had an argument. Uh, some things got thrown around in the hotel room. Had Ms. Lee, had Ms. Marsh also reported that things have been thrown in the apartment yes. or hotel room? Yes. And just to go back to Ms. Marsh's statement, did she give you more details about how the defendant hit her in the head? 
what he used hands, uh, weapons. She said that, uh, he, he used his hand. Uh, I don't think she told me which which one it was. And where on her head was? Did you feel the swelling? Kind of on the just above the forehead. I don't remember which which side. And I'm sorry, can we just double check? Did she give you information about her relationship with Mr. Lee's, what their their status, their relationship was? I'm just dating. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Settles. You were called there to, to be on scene at some residence. Is that right? I mean, somebody dispatch said you need to go to a certain, I'm sorry, Judge, dispatch called, you said you need to be to a certain residence with a report of a DV, domestic violence. Right, the Restwood Motel. About what time of day was that? 12.37 uh, a.m. was the time of the call, I believe. And you arrived 12.45? Probably, probably wouldn't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes. Hmm. And it's room 414. I think 114. This room at Restwood, is this a, is this a, a one room and one bathroom? Yeah, yes. So so like these these uh this particular hotel, it's like they're individual buildings, like little cabins almost, yeah. or, and then there's a bathroom and then a, a, the main living right. portion. Right, TV set, a Yeah, bed, like you're standing in a hotel room. Okay, yeah. and that bathroom, that's a tiny bathroom, I'm thinking, isn't it? It's pretty small. And it's a pretty big woman, isn't it? She's um, 300 pounds? I don't know what she weighs. I'm looking at the police report. I think you got her at five, six, 300 pounds. Right? I, 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 okay. Would you? Yeah. I mean, was she? A, she was heavier your side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did she have? Did you? Did you breath test her? I don't think I did. Okay. Did she clearly been drinking? I don't. No, I don't. I, don't, I think she might have had. A, uh, I think she told me she had, might have had something. I I can't remember though. I have to look at my report. You don't remember if she was slurring her speech? If she was? If she? No, she didn't appear to be slurring her speech. Oh, to me. Do you, do you recall if you smelled any alcohol? No. Okay. And did she tell you? Why she had gone into the bathroom? Um, to get away, I believe, from Mr. Mr. Least. And she told you that she had his phone with her in the bathroom. Is that correct? Yes. And she said she was in the bathroom for a long time. I remember how long she said. She said she had gone in and come back out several times during the course of their argument. Why did she tell you that she had his telephone when she was in the bathroom? I don't remember. Did she tell you that Mr. Weiss wanted his telephone back? I think she did. Did yes. she tell you that she would not give the telephone back? I don't remember that. Did she tell you that Mr. Weiss looked for the telephone in the room, thereby throwing things around? Did she tell you that? I don't remember her telling me that. Did she tell you that Mr. Lease was angry because he was looking for his phone and wanted to call his sister? 
I can't remember if Mr. Lee's told me that or she told me that. Somebody told me that. So you, okay. So you know you did hear that and could have been at some point, yeah. Okay. Did she tell you that Mr. Lee's was looking at pornography on his telephone and that's why she had taken it away from you? I think Mr. Lee's told me that already. Did she tell you that they had been boyfriend girlfriend for 17 years? Yeah, approximately 17 years. Did she tell you that she had just gotten home when she found Mr. Squires at the restaurant? Uh, this is Mr. Squires. I'm sorry. When, yes. Did she tell you, Ms. Marsh? Did she tell you that she on that evening that she had just gotten home and Mr. Squires was at the residence already? No, oh, Mr. Lees. Mr. Lees. I'm getting my names. Yes, this is. I'm sorry, I'm getting all my names. I'm very sorry. Okay. Did she, March? Did she tell you that Lees was home uh, when she had arrived home? And she had arrived home shortly before you got there. So she, she told me that Mr. Lee was there when she arrived home from or back to the hotel room from work. And then I, I would have been several hours later. Okay. From, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Was there, when you're talking to Marsh, does she tell you anything more about the phone other than she had it in the bathroom with her? His I, phone. I can't remember all the details about the phone. I'd have to bring my report. To... Her injury, the, the, not on the top of her head. You felt for that and you could feel a knot. Yes. You couldn't see anything. It, it looked like there was some swelling, um, but if you were to try, try to take a picture, it, you wouldn't have been able to see it. So I asked her if I could feel the top of her head to, to see if I could feel that lump, and she said that I could, and I could feel that, that lump on the top of her head. But when you walked into the apartment, I think you said it was the show, but things were not in their place. Was it a TV set broken? Sometimes I'll go in and I say, yep, something happened here. I can see the guy threw an ashtray through the TV. I think what I noticed was like a lot of clutter. And then I, I noticed like a bag of potato chips uh, thrown across the floor, what appeared to be thrown across the floor, the floor. Um, just garbage. No broken appliances, lamps, TVs, radios. Uh, I don't. I think I saw any broken appliances or broken any fixtures, like, any electronic devices or, or things like that. Would have been their personal items, not the not the motels. Uh, it maybe looks just like a lot of other places. You've been a deputy for four years. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing you've been in a lot of people's homes. Who, who, who you look around and say, "This is not a tidy home." I'm guessing that that would be the case here. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it was there's clutter. Thank you. I don't have anything for Ms. Olson, any redirect? No, no, no. All right. Uh, you may step down, officer. And is there any other evidence or witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Settles, no, any no, evidence no. today? Motion to bind over? Your Honor, I would ask the court to bind over um, this case on the domestic violence third offense um, felony charge. Um, Deputy Squire testified today under 768-27C about the victim's statements to him that evening. She reported that the defendant, who was her boyfriend of 17 years, had punched her. Deputy Squires could feel an injury. Um, the, both parties reported that items had been thrown. There were items around the hotel room. Um, and just asked the court to find that probable cause existed. Um, that this domestic assault occurred. The defendant has multiple prior domestic violence convictions, including against this same victim. Thank you. All right, Mr. Settles, any argument? No, thank you.
All right. Well, based on this record, I agree with the prosecutor. There's been uh, sufficient evidence to bind over. Uh, the uh, evidence is that the defendant uh, struck the victim on the head, causing a lump on her head, and that that occurred uh, on or about June 17th in East Bay Township, Grand Traverse County. And defendant has two and, and, uh, or more uh, qualifying convictions for domestic violence. So I'll bind the defendant over as charged on the domestic violence third. Mr. Settles, let's go to the arraignment, please. Come on. Judge, I have reviewed, uh, we would like to wait for reading the complaint because I've reviewed the complaint uh, with uh, Mr. Weist, and he understands the nature of the complaint against him and the maximum penalty imposed by law. So we would like to enter a not guilty plea. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, I'll enter a not guilty plea on the defendant's behalf at this time. And uh, is there anything else for you, Mr. Settles? Would you mind? Would you mind? you have any place to look? Uh, yes. Uh, Judge, I would ask the court to consider a bond for uh, Mr. Weist. Uh, he would live at his sister's house. And I have not spoken with Mr. Weist before today. Uh, he lived at his, I'm not sure what his bond status is right now, but he lived with his sister who does live in a county. She lives in a county. Uh, and uh, there you go. He would certainly understand. He'd be monitored for alcohol and he would have no contact certainly with Ms. Marsh. Who's the sister? What's her address? Where's meals going, Your Honor? Any correct? It is. A $7,500, 10 percent bond, but I did see a bunch of violations. Um, prior violations back in July. Uh, what were those Miss, violations? Miss PDT, 7, 18, 19, 20, 21, um, 23, failed to appear for a show cause hearing. Um, so he was probably remanded uh, and his bond forfeited at that time. Yes, we, we did issue a bench warrant for him. Okay, so actually he has no bond at this time. Uh, Ms. Olson, any response? So I certainly have concerns, Your Honor. He failed to appear for the last date that this prelim was set for. Um, I have concerns for the victim um, based on the history of domestic violence against her um, and then just the defendant's ability to appear going forward. All right. He's also seen on camera drinking in the Ottawa Casino. All right. So I'll set a uh, $10,000 cash or surety bond. And uh, if he does post that, must live at his sister's home. All right, we're all set for today then. And, uh